At all times, tracks, trailways and highways served humanity as keys to evolution. Empires and civilizations have disappeared, centuries-old dust swept capitals and cities. But roads kept bringing new people here. Do we understand how roads revitalized the place hundreds of years ago and how do they change people's destinies today? We go on the expedition, the treasures of the nation, to find and reveal facts about life at crossroads of antiquity. Motorways are just the top of centuries, but if the trail is left, you will surely be found even thousands of years later. In this episode, who was the first researcher of insects in the world? What makes Bayanol a unique location for world entomology? And why moths fly towards light? Wow, it's alive! It's pure miracle. What is happening? There is no miracle here. In this case, it is just a butterfly in hibernation. It is typical for it, since the next year she'll wake up at the first heat in spring to continue its genus. Sergei Titov is entomologist and research fellow of Pavlodar State University, named after Torai Giro. Sergei has been studying higher Lepidoptera or simply butterflies in the territory of northeast Kazakhstan for 20 years. He makes regional and well discoveries of new species of butterflies from time to time. We've heard about Lithophane fursifera, which you are relevant to. Where have you discovered it? It was the first time for Kazakhstani fauna when we discovered Lithophane fursifera on the territory of Bayanaul Reserve. It was an unexpected finding made close to Black Alder. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for us to get there? Yeah, sure, for you to see the process from the inside. Let's go. Since ancient times, people have been living in places with pure drinking water, where natural reliefs created natural defense against possible enemies' attacks. More than that, they wanted to live not only safe, but also beautiful, pleasant and satisfying lives. So today we arrived in Pavlodar to go along with Sergei Titov to the roads of true aesthetes, naturalists and gourmets of antiquity. Entomologists, specialists in Lepidoptera don't use butterfly nets familiar to us since childhood. Special modern equipment and scientific methods of its installation tested for years are in their arsenal. Sergey, what are you doing right now? Now we're looking through possible routes where we will go in search for our interesting and rare butterflies. We can see western black alders on the territory of Bayanaul Reserve, not far from Kone Aulia Cave. There is a possibility to meet our butterflies there. Butterflies of Lithophane fursifera species discovered by Sergei Titov are usually found in thickets of black alder, a rare endangered representative of flora. Therefore, he firstly points out on the map places for installation of equipment for catching butterflies in the thickets of black alder. So it turns out simply coming and installing traps won't work. You have a different scientific approach. Of course, there is a variety of traps. Weather, terrain and time the very place will define what trap should be installed. The main thing is not to be late, to set everything until dark. I must say, after the trick with which Sega surprised our group at the beginning, this part of expedition is doomed to become incredible. So the goals are set, the route has been laid and the expedition is ready for departure. Good morning, Sergei. Hi there. How are you today? Perfect. Is it your equipment? Yes, it is. Well, let's load up and go. Yes, let's go. Let me help you. We don't have that much in principle. Relatively. Bayanaul State National Reserve is located in Bayanaul district of Pavlodar region. It is one of the most protected natural areas of Kazakhstan and is a favorite holiday destination for numerous tourists from Kazakhstan, Russia and China. There are many legendary tops, lakes and rivers here. The sacred Konya Auliya cave is a place of pilgrimage. There are rare species of animals and plants in its territory. Members of our expedition are now following the same dirt roads which brought the first researchers of local flora and fauna here a few decades ago. 
We stopped here for a reason. As far as I understand, you've chosen the place for traps. Yes, we've chosen this place for a reason. There is a fairly dense growth of elder along this brook, and our task for today is to install traps and try to find the butterfly again to take a series of macro photos and do some other research. Okay, you'll show us. Sure, I will. What equipment do you have? Installation of this type of traps begins with installation of such a simple white cover. It is necessary to ensure that butterflies that will sit in our future trap are clearly visible. Well, we've centered it, put in the middle. We've chosen future attachment points. Next we will use such a base. It's like a lightsaber. Well, we are using one of the parts of entomological net for installation of entomological light net. Well, let's prepare it. Interestingly, the smell of fruit and wine baits attract some species of butterflies. To catch these butterflies, entomologists hang up red wine cloth cords or simply moisten bark of trees with wine. Often scientists collect butterfly caterpillars with a special net and usually do it in evening when many caterpillars come out of shelters for food. But collecting them in light traps using lamps with different emission spectra and often ultraviolet is the most effective method. All in all, what can prevent a success? successful butterfly catch. Well, this is an aggregate of different factors. Mainly, of course, the weather, especially in autumn, when it affects a nice catch. Despite the fact that the expedition went to catch butterflies in autumn and it became noticeably colder outside, the air temperature and wind force are still quite acceptable to hope for a catch. It remains only to install traps and wait. Carl Linnaeus, a Swedish naturalist and zoologist of the 18th century, is considered the first researcher of insects who made a significant contribution to the study of wildlife. Carl Linnaeus created a unified system for classification of flora and fauna. Well, it's practically finished, right, and it really looks like a ship or a canvas. We are finishing installation of the trap. May I ask the question which concerns many since childhood? Why do butterflies fly towards the light? Has the science answered it? Well, there are a number of hypotheses, and many of them are connected to the moonlight. The moonlight? Does this mean that you're ready? Yes, we are. I mean, we're just to set on the power station, connect cables and prepare special chemicals. And wait. And wait for sure. Well, let's hope. Let's do it. You know, I heard that elder in which our desired butterfly dwells is also included into the Red Book. Black elder, yes. This rare species needs to be protected, along with rare insects, among which is our lithophane fusifera. Who can tell us precisely about black alder? Well, Dinara Kunchuakova, a specialist, a research fellow of Bayanol National Reserve, can tell more about black alder. Let's find her then. Bayanol National Park is simply huge. People who maintain order on this giant territory and will tell us about its flora and fauna are already here. I'm asking you inside. Kwan Dik, we've heard that Bayanaul Reserve is a precious pearl for the residents of Pavlodar, isn't it? Well, I would not say that for Pavlodar region, I would say that it is a pearl for the whole Kazakhstan. This is a unique mountain range, unspoiled lakes, untouched places, and even virgin forests in protected areas. Well, we have rich flora and fauna, the red book species of plants and animals here. Now with entomologist Sergei Titov, we are studying rare species of butterflies. 
редкие виды бабочек. И надеюсь, что мы тоже... And I hope we'll manage to see some other pearls of local flora and fauna. Динара. Динара, ты где находишься? Dinara now is in the field. You can talk to her about flora. And concerning fauna, you can talk to our game biologist Begzat Akimbek. He is dealing with the animal world. The total area of Bainol Reserve is 128,000 hectares of carefully protected territories. Of these, 68.5 thousand of mountain massives, lakes and forests are directly the territory of reserve. Another 60,000 hectares in the Kizil Tau Wildlife Sanctuary, in which the so-called mountain ram or Kazakhstan argali of the Red Book is specially protected. Good afternoon. Hello, my name is Arman. My pleasure. I am Dina, senior fellow. It's nice to meet you. We are from Sergei Titov. Right, an entomologist. He says that some rare species of butterfly, Lithophane fusifera, is somehow connected to black elder. It lives here. Yes, I got it. We are in Jasibai district. Here along the nameless brook the elder grows. A relict. The Red Book Woods. Is this an elder? It is. We have ancient mountains here, hence certain types of plants has been preserved. Alder itself enriches the soil with oxygen. There are many indicative plants around it. It's personal fauna. What are those indicative plants? Upon them it is possible to determine what change occurs in nature, how it affects the ecosystem. If a certain kind of plant disappears, this means that the same fauna the same tree species, everything, being the same ecosystem, being interconnected, will also disappear. Uniqueness of black elder is not only that it is a relic, that is a very ancient tree species, and is not only that it is a central part of the whole ecosystem. It turns out that black elder has healing properties. In addition to Kazakhstan, black elder can be found only in Canada, and if it is not protected, it can simply disappear along with the whole system of flora and fauna. What threatens them? Why can they disappear? Cattle may eat branches or rub the bark of trees, for example, or people may litter. All that influences negatively the ecosystem. You've mentioned plants which are growing around the elder forests, indicative plants, indicators. Can you show them? If we stop here, for example, we will see a groundsel. This plant grows 60, 70 height maximum and now it is flowering and gestation phase. Is it medicinal or? No, it is not. It is an indicator. Here we can see spire or meadow sweet. Yes, I've heard about it. Now we see milfoil, which is already a medicinal plant. It's being used in folk medicine for curing gastrointestinal illnesses. Meaning it is possible to find a plant alike at every step. Bayanol National Park is the real paradise for botanists and medics. Here grows 552 species of plants, including five species of the Red Book. 78 plants are medicinal, most belong to the category of economically valuable. They are used in folk medicine, some are taken for food, and many of them are closely connected with black elder. Meanwhile, a night has come in by Anaul National Reserve and hunting of entomologist Sergei Titov is in full swing. In the process of catching butterflies, difficulties arose. The air temperature dropped noticeably and Sergei had to reset his traps to a more favorable place in his view. And this move immediately gave its results. Here is the second specimen of Blepharitianica. It is the second specimen for this region, for Pamada region. Excellent! Now it will be frozen in fumes of ethyl acetate ethanoate. In general, it is the most humane sampling method. Now we will just fall asleep and I will be able even to hold it on my hand. It is certainly an unexpected finding. And that's it. We can put it into a container. Here is another specimen. 
but we already caught it in Bayanaul region. Members of the expedition watched with interest the actions of Sergei Titov, who from a leisurely calm person at the moment of catching butterflies, suddenly turned into a clever and adventurous hunter, and this passion was immediately passed on to all those present. Look here, there is a beautiful green one. Here in front of us there is a cartworm butterfly. It is called Stavrophora celsius. Is it rare? No, it's not. It's typical of Bayanaul region. These are locals, aren't they? They are. Hold on a second, it's a fourth species. Well, sit. Do you have a new discovery there? This is the same discovery, the third specimen of new type of cartworm butterfly. It's very interesting. It is of beautiful chocolate color. Cocoa color. Do you want to take a photo of it? Well, we'll try to put it on something, on a stone and take a photo. It's like a model. We meet this species for the first time and it is certainly a huge finding. Today was for the first time. It was. It is a truly historical moment. Indeed. Only for one night. Three new specimens for one night. It's nice. Sergey, why do we have a few butterflies? We could probably have more of them. Firstly, we are catching them in autumn at not good weather conditions. I mean, there was a probability that we won't catch anything at all. Does this mean that we were lucky? Yes, we certainly were lucky. We have visited Bayanaul and the weather was bad, that is why I didn't make optimistic prognosis. But nevertheless, you see the catch. Can we already say something about this catch? What butterflies do we have? Well, we caught only three species so far. The largest scale of them has Agricola kivala. It is followed by Amaconia susimucula, Herites under the lamp. These are quite common species for Bayanaul, but Blepharotia amica was caught here for the first time. We've caught two specimens and this is very... For the first time for Bayanaul? For the first time for Pavlodar region, for northeast Kazakhstan? Really? It means that this finding will fall into the annex to the main publication in which we've described 481 species. After that we found two more species. This is the third one, which means that we already have enough material for the additional article. So are we also participants of discovery? Of course you are. Congratulations. Congratulations to you too. Can you explain this construction and which is more important? Why has it been installed here? Well, if talking about constructions, they can be of different shapes and forms. This very trap is more convenient because it can be quickly installed, that is why I use it more often. And why here? Why not somewhere else? It is because here is the board of step and Alder Grove. So we have more opportunities to catch fauna, which is common for both steppe and forest community. For the controlling catching, we went down the forest and installed an ultraviolet trap. Do you mean this beautiful one? Yes, this one. Having received incomparable satisfaction from the night hunting for butterflies, the next morning the expedition went on a day hunt for Agali, enjoying stunningly beautiful landscapes of Bayanaul National Reserve on the way. This is an amazing place. It is wonderful that a holiday center has been built here. What is this? Yes, yes, it's there. A Tismolian object. Pull over here. Let's have a look. Well, here is the brightest evidence that people lived here in ancient times. This is a monument of Tismolian culture, a sanctuary that dates back to the early Iron Age. It was a little less than 3,000 years ago, can you imagine? Obviously, people who lived here on this beautiful land possessed not only a subtle aesthetic taste, 
look at this beauty around, but apparently also had a sophisticated taste in food. Because there is a plenty of everything here. It is said that till now these ancient paths are still roamed by Argali and we can meet them. To do this, we're going to the National Reserve to talk with a specialist, Begzat Akimbekov. In the meantime, the nature of Bainaul managed to show its steep temper. The air temperature dropped sharply, the wind became noticeably stronger, and even the snow fell. The expedition participants fully realized how lucky they were with butterflies last night. We could only hope that in the same way we'll be lucky with Argali. On the vast grounds of Bainaul National Reserve, the expedition was looking for local specialists who would help to arrange a meeting with a rare animal. You are Begzat Akimbekov, aren't you? Yes, I am. Dinara said that you can tell us about the animal world in Bayanaul National Reserve. We are now in Kizeltau Wildlife Sanctuary of total square of 60 hectares. In general, there are 45 species of mammals in Bayanaul National Reserve, including 177 species of birds, of which 12 species of birds are included in the Red Book and Agali. Now, are they being protected here? For their protection, raids are being conducted. During the hunting season, raids get intensified and are being conducted jointly with law enforcement agencies. Sagadat Aga, please tell us why Agali has chosen this very area for living. Well, here we have mainly Kizeltau Wildlife Sanctuary and Agali likes wild grasses. Mountainous relief is favorable, especially during the lambing period, when does are separating from bucks to avoid disturbance factors. Disturbance from people or from predators? Mainly from predators, yes, from wolves. When wolves disturb them, Argali go to mountains, because it is hard for wolves to get them in mountains. And what is its temper? What an animal Argali is? Argali is very cautious in nature. It is very timid, does not allow people or cars to approach it. It just leaves. Having seen from afar, it tries not to meet either techniques or people. If it is such a shy animal, will we be able to meet it here right now? Yeah, sure, we'll drive across the sanctuary and we'll definitely see it. Well, let's set out in search of Agali. Let's do it. All aboard! Kizeltau terrain is hilly mountainous with spacious Jailau between the hills. Early in the morning, Agali go to the watering place. They quickly run from mountain to mountain through the valley and slow the course at a height and solemnly hide behind the peaks. It is possible to overtake Agali only by arranging a long-term ambush and by pursuing them on the car as you go. It was decided to go after Agali at the time of their return from the watering place. However, Agali had their own plans. They decided to stay away from annoying people. The expedition relied on the help of experienced Jaegers who know the roots of animals and their habits, tried to avoid and thaw their red book wards. But watchful mountain animals did not let uninvited guests to a close distance. So we traveled a considerable territory in search of Argali, but unfortunately Argali is really very timid animal. It is very cautious, looks out from behind the rock with a short look and runs away on its business. What to do? We will also go further on our business. While we were chasing Argali, Sergei Titov managed to prepare everything necessary for laboratory treatment of insects caught in the night in marching conditions. To do this, he deployed his mobile laboratory right in the office of Bayanaul National Reserve. The first thing needed to be done for scientific research of butterflies is to spread their wings in order to determine to which species they are related to, according to morphological features, that is, appearance. If this cannot be done immediately because there are species twins, which like two drops of water similar to each other, then complicated scientific technologies come into play. So, by means of this method, we open and study the inner structures, since these are the inner structures which allow us to see species-specific marks. All in all, how many species of butterflies dwell in here? 
For now, we were able to reveal about 400 Scoopy Lepidoptera, around 400 species. Yes, if not talking about other kinds. I mean, I have mentioned only one kind of Scoopy Lepidoptera. There are about 400 of them. Indeed, hypothetically, the total amount of species will exceed 1,000. More than a thousand species. Yes, more than a thousand. The world of insects in Kazakhstan at the largest scale was explored by the well-known entomologist Pavel Ustinovich Marikovsky. Born in the Far East and being a physician epidemiologist by profession, he enthusiastically explored the world of insects, ants in particular. Pavel Marikovsky was not only a research scientist who discovered new species of Amazon ants, but also an active popularizer of the science of insects. In total, what endangers butterflies? What adds drama and conflicts to their lives? Predators or winter as a non-reversible disaster? Well, the factor which influences those insects is not a winter, of course, since they got used to winter and autumn and other seasons. The thing which insects couldn't get used to yet is the human factor. Does it mean that humans are their main enemy? The main enemy, of course. I mean humans who can destroy a whole step in a short period of time. What do you mean? Let's say a human can set step on fire and along with the grass not only butterflies but also other insects can burn. Okay, fires. But what else can do harm to the insects from the human side? Well, from the human side, overgrazing of cattle also influences negatively the insect's population. What is it? It's when in small territories or simple uncertain territories the cattle grazing is highly intensified, so that the plants do not have enough time to grow. What else? What else? There is such a sensible global subject of climate change. The global, the global climate change, yes. Now this issue is being discussed around the globe. But why do we need thousands of species? Let's say one butterfly has disappeared, so what? Well, there are no unwanted living organisms in nature. They are all necessary, they are all part of nature. There is the concept of food chains in nature. Some kinds of insects eat certain types of plants. They in turn are eaten by other types of insects as well as birds and animals. Those are hunted by other species of animals. And in all this cycle, the top position is occupied by humans. And if at least one brick in this pyramid falls down, if only one link is lost in this closed chain, then the entire pyramid can collapse and the whole chain of natural interchange will break. Well, as far as I understand, your institute, in collaboration with Bayanoul National Reserve, undertakes Yes, Pavlodar State University, in collaboration with Bayanoul National Reserve, undertakes the joint scientific work. And due to this research, we have modern and useful scientific results. Well, if you are undertaking such huge research work, then the second part of it is the task of the society – to preserve those species, right? Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, since ancient times, people have happily settled in places where there was an opportunity to live not only nourishing and safe, but also beautiful and pleasant life. One of such places is undoubtedly Bayanaul, the pearl of the national, natural wealth of Kazakhstan. Our ancestors were able not only to settle down and reach in natural resources areas, but also to live there in perfect harmony, to protect them. And even if in ancient times people did not yet know that they are surrounded by thousands of species of butterflies, they did not study them in detail under microscopes, did not give names to every bug, they had the wisdom to appreciate this surrounding ecological treasure. Otherwise, it simply would not have reached us in all its glory, in its original form.
Otherwise, not only roads laid by ancient aesthetes and gourmets in the fertile lands of Bainaul would not have survived, but there would not have been those who travel along these roads to this day.